Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of I Want a Mini Bike. You'll notice two things, and there's a few things that I have to say before I uh, really get into today. You'll notice that it is currently day seven, not day five, considering the last episode was day four. Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, I recorded on day five. And it was crap. It wasn't a good episode. I was disjointed and, yeah, more disjointed than I normally am. So I trashed the episode. It was just garbage. So I said, screw it, and gave up on it. Uh, I did make the sniper rifle. But I can't show it off anymore because I don't have any more ammo. And that is because of yesterday. Okay, day six. Um, I had ev had every intention of... Just making day six a normal resource gathering day. So, a day I didn't record. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. But, uh, right when the morning started. Alright, so I was up hiding on my pillar like I normally am. Day shows up, nothing's around, no zombies, no nothing around. So I come down off the pillar, and I come down here to start making some arrows, because I ran out of iron arrows. And while, they, while the arrowheads were cooking, I come out the door. You know, I come out the door, and I do my standard thing, where I just stick my head out the door and start looking around. As I turn this way, there was a pack of dogs running that way. All right, and I saw four or five of them at the time. So I quickly ducked back inside, closed the door, and just kind of stopped and listened for a second. This wasn't making its noise. The fire obviously wasn't doing anything. And they didn't sound like they were attacking me. So I very slowly, very carefully went upstairs, which I'm going to run now because pff, they're not around. And I peeked my head up, out, and right as I did, I noticed that there were two dogs right there that were, you know, stuck in the rock. They were attacking the rock because they couldn't progress forward. And, you know, zombies tend not to go around things. They tend to try to go through them. It's annoying, but it's a thing. Uh, and then there was, you know, the five or six other dogs up, up there that I noticed were running away. But the second I poked my head up and looked up and saw that, they turned around and started running back. So I'm like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Tell me, tell me, tell me these things are just exploring. They're not actually attacking me. But nope. Half of them made a beeline for this door. Half of them made a beeline for that door. So I come over here with the sniper rifle because I'm out of arrows at the time. Remember, the, was still cooking up arrows. And I'm standing right here. And I'm trying to shoot the dogs that are coming up the stairs here. They won't stand still. And I had... 11 total bullets and I think I hit with nine of them because the damn things just wouldn't stand still oh look there's actually <laughs> a crack in my wall where I shot the wall by accident um, and but I it got to the point where it's like okay there's one dog left I have one bullet left I managed to hit the dog and kill the dog but I heard more dogs you know more dogs around I'm like crap there are more of them so I'm standing here looking for the rest of the dogs, and I accidentally fall off the roof. Just like that, actually. That was actually not intentional. Uh, so a bunch of dogs come around the corner here. There's two or three dogs over there, and they're coming at me. And all I have is the freaking stick. It's terrible. I'm like, crap, crap, crap. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But I don't know what else to do because dogs run. They don't slow down during the day. They're the only zombies that run during the day. So, you know, I stand my ground and I fight them. And I call bullshit on this game. There is no way in hell a dog can hit me when I can't hit them with a stick. There's no way a dog can bite me or claw me when I can't hit them with the stick. They do not, they do not have that kind of range. And I know this for a fact because I was backing off from the dog at the same speed the dog was coming at me. I would swing, miss, and I know I, I know I was right in line with hitting the dog, but then it would attack and hit me. Same exact distance away. So I call bullshit on that. 
but, you know, I get down, I start killing some of these dogs with the club, and I maybe kill three or four of them, and then something terrible happens. I died. It sucks. I died. But all in all, there were about 20 or 30 total dogs. And, uh, you know, for 20 or 30 dogs, I think I did pretty good with dying only once. Honestly. I think I did pretty damn good. So, yeah, that was fun. That was entertaining, to say the least. Alright, so what am I going to do today? Well, today is obviously the seventh day, and it's Blood Moon Day. So we got Horrifying Horde Day. I think I hear a zombie to my left as well. Ugh, there we go. Okay. Uh, did I... Ooh, there's one over there. Let's quickly search the nurse zombie, see if she has any meds on her. Boop. Oh, and I took some antibiotics, too. Um, not because I was infected or anything, but because they help with your wellness, and when you die, your wellness drops severely. So I had to uh, get my... Or I was getting trying to get my wellness back up. And so far, so good. I'm 111 wellness. I was, what, 118? I forget. Uh, I should probably start gathering those nails, honestly. No. E-R, not tab. Ugh. All right, anyway, so today, what am I going to do? Well, I think I'm debating on what to do. I really, really am. What I was thinking about doing uh, is starting to experiment with some of these hordes. So running the hell away, really, just getting the hell out of here, but pillaring up like I normally do, but further up. So let's see, wood. Uh, where's my wood frame? Wood frame. I'm gonna need more wood than that. Yeah. I didn't actually manage to get much scavenging done, you know, because I was dying to dogs. I managed to chop down a whole bunch of trees. But that's about it. I didn't get much iron. I'm very much out of, you know, scrap iron. And it's kind of disappointing. I can't make more bullets. Because if we look at the uh, 762 bullets, it takes three gunpowder to make one of these bullets. I have ten total gunpowder. So I really, really, really need to find a cave. I mean, like, badly, badly need to find a cave. So I can get some potassium nitrate. There's plenty of coal lying around. I hear something outside. So, what I'm thinking about doing... And I'm debating on whether I want to do it with my armor or not. But I'm thinking about heading out. Picking a direction and going. And exploring the area thoroughly to see if I can find a cave. If I find a cave, I waypoint it. That way I know where it is. If I don't find a cave, well then no biggie. But I explore like I normally do. I scavenge like I normally do. And, uh... You know, depending on what I find, that's not what I'm looking for. Put that stuff away for a second. Wood frame. There we go. Alright, that's a bunch. Uh, what's the total? I don't know what the total is. Let's grab some more. Alright. Do I want to do this with my armor? Because I don't want to lose my armor. And if I die during this little experiment, I'm probably not going back for my stuff. So I don't want to take any of the stuff that I want to keep. So let's take off all my armor. Put it in my storage chest here. Uh, put that away. I'm going to keep the arrows just so I have some ranged weapon. 
But let's put this stuff away. And we'll put that away, but I'll grab the uh, not as good one, the fine one, instead of the good one. Oh, wait, that is my good one. I shouldn't be carrying that one. I should, all right, yeah, whatever. I shouldn't be carrying this one. I should be carrying this one right now. Ugh. All right, uh, anything else I want to drop off? No, everything else is going to end up being used. Oh, I do want to drop those off. I don't need those right now. Yeah, let's grab some bandages really quick, just in case something goes wrong. And, uh, let's see, do I need anything else? I'll keep a thing of painkillers. I have plenty of goldenrod tea. Lots of goldenrod tea. So I don't need to worry about losing any of that. Not worried about that. Uh, plenty of food eat a blueberry pie before I head out. Yay! Oh, bounce my head off the ceiling. Uh, let's make some wood frames real quick. Wrap those up. I'll put the three spare away. Alright, so the plan is that when the when night comes I pillar up as high as freaking possible, so as many up as I have. I just realized it's raining for the first time in this entire series. <laughs> Alright, so where do I want to go? This, thing is, this map is bloody huge. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, this way. So, um, yeah, when the horde comes... I am going to pillar up as high as possible with the stuff that I have and see if that keeps me away from the zombies. Depending, of course, on what I manage to gather, like what I manage to find, because there's a very, very, very good chance that I'm going to die doing this. I have this sinking, or I have this suspicion that it doesn't matter where you are when the seven day horde shows up they already know where you are and they are coming to get you so i have a funny feeling that no matter how high up i get uh it's yeah i'm just screwed in general but that's the point of this test to figure that out to figure out if that is true um yeah so, smelly things. Ooh, 64. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is a perfect test. Um, smelly things add, like, 30 meter detection range if you're wearing it on your belt. So, in, in, in this area down here, not in this area, this is your backpack, this is your belt. So, if, you're well, or so if you have smelly things on, in your belt, it increases by 30. If it's in your backpack, I think it's only, like, 20 or 25 or something like that. I take it the rain stopped. <laughs> so, I want to try uh, 50, at least 50. I'm going to try 64. That seems like a very good number as a pillar up. It's a total of 64 blocks high to see if that's high enough to stay out of the range of the zombie hordes. Of course, if it's not, I'm going to die because... Yeah, the second they tear out that bottom, uh, it's going to kill me just from the fall. And then I'm going to have horrible, horrible problems when it comes to uh, respawning. Oh, he did notice me. All right. Fine, if you insist on being killed. If I can actually shoot your bobbing head. <laughs> I hate it when my hand twitches like that. Uh, it's so bloody common, too, that I, my hand does that. Hmm. Whatever. Uh, so. Interesting things. So everybody's been going on and on and on about uh, Metal Gear Solid Five and Mad Max. Two new games. Now, I was never terribly interested in the Metal Gear series. So I don't 
play it. Really, I tend not to care. However, Mad Max seemed mildly interesting. I was watching a couple of YouTubers play it, and it really seems like a game that I would enjoy. Um, a lot of critics are saying it's repetitive. They're complaining about the fighting style because it's based off of the uh, Arkham series, the Batman Arkham series. And... Yeah, so the critics aren't exactly thrilled with the game, but regular players seem to enjoy the hell out of the game. And I was watching other people do it, or other people play it, and yeah, it seems pretty repetitive. You start out in an area, you clear out the area, you move on to the next area, you do the same thing over and over and over again. I kind of like that. You know, I enjoy the hell out of that kind of thing, so I think I would enjoy that game. So I picked it up. I bought the game. Now, I would be playing it right now, but I can't find the monetization policy for Avalanche Studios. I can find no information one way or the other. I don't... Uh, positive or negative. Uh, now, I somehow doubt they have a problem with that at all. I really, really doubt that they do. But I would rather not take the risk. Um, I... You know, it's just, I deal with enough copyright bullshit already, and I have the rights to use the stuff that I've been using. I make sure to look up monetization policies before I start recording things. I, uh, you know, worry about licensing when it comes to music, that kind of thing. And I still have con content ID problems. And it's annoying as shit. So I'd rather not have to... You know, worry about content ID, even false content ID claims. Oh, uh, I think there's far too many damn zombies around here for me to worry about that house right now. Ooh, plane, plane! Where are you? There you are. I forgot today was airplane day. Completely forgot. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't see that. There it is. Wow, he left that far away. All right, so let's head... Let's see, you are... Where's my crosshair? I can't see my crosshair! Almost due west. Slightly south of due west. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so... um, Yeah, can't find their monetization policy, so I'm not going to record until I find more information. Or I eventually just go, holy shit, this is an amazing game, I really, really need to record this. Um, whichever happens, I don't know which will happen, but whichever happens. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought anyways. But before I played the game, before I even bought the game, I wanted to watch the movies because I figured that it was a sequel to the movies. Now, I had already watched Fury Road, the new Mad Max movie, the one that came out this year. And it was actually pretty good. I liked the movie. Um, the best way to describe it is it's a story about a one-handed woman. And she does have one hand. She has her arm, but she's missing her hand. She has this really weird prosthetic robot arm kind of thing going for her. It's It fits so perfectly well with Mad Max. Uh, but it's a story about her... <sighs> trying to save a bunch of women, breeders, from a warlord and eventually saving the entire city. Bloop. Oh yeah, I guess that would probably qualify as spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, uh, but it's told through the perspective of Max. And he's insane in the beginning of this movie. He's very much insane. He hallucinates and everything like that. And I figured, okay, it all fits. Mad Max, mad insanity, that kind of thing. And the hallucinations, I figured, were from his wife and daughter because I knew his wife and daughter died. That's kind of common knowledge at this point. And I fairly liked the movie. So I looked further into it and I started, or I looked into getting the other three movies uh, Mad Max. Mad Max 2, uh, Road Warrior, and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. 
uh, knowing full well that Beyond Thunderdome is not considered a good movie. Well, not considered a good Mad Max movie. It's the lower level, you know, lower tier kind of thing. Handlebar schematic, sweet. I want to have you. I don't care about you. Yes, 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 yes. We actually have a thing for the mini bike. So we've already got a win for this. Anyways, uh, let's not go back the way we came. Let's go over here. Let's see what's over here. So I watched the original Mad Max, the first one that was like what, 1979 or 89 or something like that. So. Definitely older movie, definitely screamed older movie. It was definitely an older style. But what really confused the living hell out of me is that it wasn't post-apocalyptic. It was just Australia. I'm like, what the? This, what? What? This makes no bloody sense. Because I've always been told Mad Max was post-apocalyptic. So... Yeah, everything I had ever seen, Mad Max, was post-apocalyptic. So I was very, very confused for a very long time watching this movie. Um, but the title is perfect for that movie. If you haven't watched the, the Mad Max series, go watch them. They're actually pretty good. Even beyond Thunderdome. Uh, Tina Turner wasn't exactly the greatest addition to the series, but she actually was still pretty good. So I would qualify it as a good action movie, just as long as you don't try to, you know, look too deep into it. Anyways, um, so the, the, yeah, if you haven't watched the Mad Max movies and you care about the Mad Max movies, go watch them now because I'm going to start talking about my confusion over the series and there's going to be a hell of a lot of spoilers, um, more than I've already kind of let on. Uh, anyways, uh, so, uh, what was I saying? So, I, yeah, at the end of the original Mad Max, still not post-apocalyptic. This isn't the story about how Australia became post-apocalyptic. It's the story of how Mad Max became the road warrior. So a, he pisses off a biker gang through absolutely no fault of his own. He pisses off a biker gang. Now, Max is a cop. He's highway patrol. And he's chasing a guy that had killed a cop and stole his uh, patrol vehicle. And they were both traveling about, you know, 120, 130 mile an hour down the road. And if you pay attention to reality, when you're driving that fast on a road, it doesn't really matter what kind of road you're on. Chances are you're going to hit something. Ooh, did I just find a new city? I did. Do I hear that guy? Oh, no, I hear that guy. Okay, I was going to say, that's really fucking close. Um, so the, uh, the, the biker dude, the, the... Yeah, they are technically a biker gang. But uh, one of the gang members wrecks into a very explodey vehicle that just happened to have crashed on the road. Killing... The, the member of the gang and his uh, female compadre. And I don't know I don't know if they were like you know married or boyfriend girlfriend or whatever. I have no idea. They both look like meth addicts. But whatever. Anyways uh, so Max of course survives completely unscathed. Pisses off the biker gang of course and humans aren't logical so it's perfectly acceptable that the biker gang would get pissed off at the highway patrol for doing this because they blame the highway patrol even though it was the gang members own stupid fault I hear a zombie I don't see a zombie oh it's just one of the crawlers not a problem and, that, and that's fine so the Biker gang manages to burn alive Max's best friend. Doesn't kill him. Still alive. But it's one of those scenarios that you see in movies that are like 95% of the body is third degree burns. And yeah, 
Pain, pain, pain. And Mac, Mac starts going insane. He's like, that's, that's not my friend in there. That kind of thing. And he basically abandons his friend. And he quits the police force. And goes off with his wife and his daughter. You know, just to get away from everything. Well, the biker gang doesn't want anything, or doesn't want that to happen. So they go after his wife and kid, eventually managing to run them over on motorcycles. Killing the kid, which I can understand, because the kid's like one years old, not even, not old enough to talk anyways. Which did confuse the living hell out of me, because I'm like, wait a second. The hallucination was a girl that was like six years old. I should have brought an axe. I really should have brought an axe. Um, the the hallucinations in Fury Road was a, of a girl that was six years old. So I'm like, okay, maybe that's explained later on in the movies. Whatever. Uh, his wife lost an arm and was in pretty bad shape, but the docs said she would be fine. Now, I don't know if the docs were just humoring him. They didn't make that clear in the movie, but as far as Max knew because he was listening when the docs were talking, his wife was going to be okay. Of course, he went insane, because he just lost his kid, and he abandons his wife to go and kill the biker gang. Now, again, I have no problem with this storytelling. It makes sense. People do crazy things. They don't follow logic. He... Probably should have stuck around and helped his wife through her very, very trying ordeal. Uh, but he went off to kill the biker gang. And succeeds. And that's the end of the movie. Uh, the end of the movie is him just driving off. I have no idea if he ever went back to his wife. I don't think he did. Um, I think they kind of leave it like his wife was dying. Or dead. Or whatever, but they don't say that in the movie. They don't make it clear anyways that that's what's happening. So, yeah, very confusing on that one. Uh, Mad Max 2, Road Warrior, starts out with an, a narrator talking about the apocalypse. Basically, uh... Did, did they point out that it was a nuclear war? I think they point out that it was a war. I don't think they point out that it was a nuclear war. I don't think that comes until uh, Beyond Thunderdome. But they pointed out that, you know, it was an apocalypse, and they explain why all of a sudden it's a post-apocalyptic movie. And, of course, Max is being chased by things. Because that's how every Mad Max thing starts. With a car chase and with a very large crash and max has the uh black cruiser interceptor that they made in the first movie so big thing you know powerful fastest thing there destroyed within like the first 15 minutes of the movie <laughs> like he gets into a wreck he rolls that thing i'm like he is not getting that thing back and then it explodes and i'm like he's definitely not getting that thing back so, interesting movie. Uh, then he, he comes across a city. Wait, does, is that how that movie starts? I think I might be blurring the third movie and the second movie. No, no, no. The third movie starts with an airplane. Oh, shit. I forget. Um... Yeah, the third movie starts with the airplane... So the second movie starts with um, him wrecking his car. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, the, as I had said, I've been watching people play the game, the Mad Max game. And it starts out where he's driving this, what looks like a black police interceptor. The same exact police interceptor he was driving at the end of Mad Max. So I figured that's his car. He's going to keep that car. It's going to be his car throughout the rest of the series. Completely, totally destroyed at the beginning of the <laughs> second movie. 
I'm like, okay, that was slightly unexpected. Didn't didn't expect that at all. Uh, yeah, so... He comes across a little town that makes gas. They uh, mine for oil, they translate, or they process it into gasoline, and then they sell it off to other cities. Well, apparently there's this warlord that wears a hockey mask and not much else that's tormenting this city because he wants the gasoline. He doesn't want to do it through proper bartering. And they want to get the hell out because they just don't want to deal with the warlord anymore. And they hire Max because they stole his car. They stole his car. See, that, that's the part that doesn't make any damn sense. Did he steal somebody else's car and then go find this place? I only watched it once, so things aren't kind of lining up for me at all. I don't want that bone. Screw that bone. So, yeah, slightly confused. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Now, I'm lost. now I lost my train of thought again. But anyways, okay, so the big point that I'm trying to get to is that throughout the three movies, the first three movies, he doesn't hallucinate. Now, obviously, the first one, he's not insane. He doesn't go insane until after he loses his kid. Perfectly acceptable. Uh, perfectly understandable that he would go insane after losing his kid. But he doesn't go insane until after he loses his kid. That's fine. In the movie, there are no hallucinations after he goes insane. None whatsoever. Second movie... He's the the title Mad Max is only there because it's supposed to be a sequel to Mad Max. He's not insane. He's not overly pissed or anything like that. He might be mildly agitated, but that's about it. Ooh. Let's see if you're any good compared to the rest of my stuff. Oh. Pfft. Well, guess what? You're getting put on because I found you. All right. Yeah, so Max isn't insane. He's not overly pissed. The title, Mad, doesn't really fit. Same with the third movie. He understandably gets upset, uh, but he's not insane. He's not pissed or anything like that. The title, Mad, doesn't fit either. He's actually surprisingly well-adjusted, considering that he lived through the nuclear apocalypse. That's not me, is it? I think that's... whatever. So, in Fury Road, his insanity, his sudden and dramatic insanity, that is never actually explained in any way, shape, or form in the movie is just suddenly there. Now, the movie starts with a car chase, and since all of the other movies started with a car chase, I never even questioned it. Because that's pretty much been established in the uh, wasteland. There's a lot of car battles. That's just what happens in the wasteland. And it does kind of make sense that people would battle in cars. Uh, it's efficient, mostly. And if you're not that worried about gasoline which they don't seem to be. Gasoline is not that valuable. I mean, they can get oil. They can process it into gas. It doesn't seem to be that rare to me, at least in the series. So, yeah. It, it does make sense that you would battle in the cars in that situation. It does make sense to me. So, I'm fine with that. That makes sense. But his sudden dramatic hallucinations and his outright insanity at the beginning of the movie is never explained. It just is. And when they wrote the movie, they're acting like it's always been. So they never touch on it whatsoever. It's just, it's a thing, suddenly. And the last half of the movie relies on that insanity. So if, if he didn't have the hallucinations, he probably wouldn't have done what he did 
to make the last half of the movie happen. So I'm very confused at that. I originally thought it was his daughter that he was hallucinating. But his daughter wasn't old enough to talk. So, no. It wasn't his daughter at all. Uh... I thought it was his insanity from living through the apocalypse. That's what I figured the first movie was. No. The first movie was not post-apocalyptic in any way, shape, or form. So this sudden and dramatic hallucinations confuses the hell out of me. And it's poor storytelling. I'm going to say that right off the bat. It's poor storytelling because they don't explain where these hallucinations came from. Or why they're so important to the story that it's actually a pivotal, pivotal plot point. I'm going to do my testing up here. Do I have anything that I really, really, really want to save? This stuff. But that's about it. Let's take an antibiotic. Let's prepare for tonight. Let's see. Worst case scenario, we might actually survive this. Or, let's try to survive the worst case scenario. The gasoline might be useful. So, I was trolling around Reddit, like I normally do. And, uh, I stumbled upon a post about Mad Max. Because, you know, it's the internet and that's one of the new games. Most of Reddit is full of Mad Max and Metal Gear Solid Five. And I was reading the comments and somebody commented on the post that the game explains his its insanity and his, and why he was running from the raiders or whatever they're called at the beginning of the movie. I'm like, "Ooh, I got to play this game because that movie makes no sense otherwise." <laughs> so that was the the final straw. I was heavily debating on if I wanted to buy the game or not. Uh, it looked good, but I don't. I really just didn't feel right paying the sixty dollars for it. And I don't trust other sites like Green Man Gaming or anything like that because they have a bad reputation. Now, I I, I know it's not their fault. They try to do everything right. They try not to screw over their customers, but where they get their stuff does not have a good reputation. Where they get their stuff tends not to care. Some of the places don't care. Now, I know most people have actually been good. Ooh, I gotta hurry the hell up and finish this testing. I was standing around too long punching a cactus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, here they come. Moment of truth time. Where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? I hear them. There they are. They are coming straight for me. I'm undetected. And they're getting redirected by the hill. There are dogs down there. They don't seem to be noticing me. Oh, and it's becoming hard to see. Is there anything down there? I can't see. I don't know if they're attacking the pillar. I don't think they are. They don't look like it. Find out if I fall to my death all of a sudden. Okay, so I am 64 blocks up. And I seem to be relatively safe. So, yeah, I think... We, I think we have an answer. There are zombies down there. I'll keep recording, obviously, just in case I do fail. But basically the rest of my recording is going to be me standing up here on a pillar, looking down, wondering when I'm going to die. So far, so good anyways. Uh, so to finish up what I was saying, what the shit? What is that? 
It is to the west. Is that supposed to be the sun? Yeah, it's going down. I think that's the sun. Where's the moon? There's the moon. And it's a blood moon. Huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, our sun turns into a black hole at night. All right. Anyways, uh, so to finish off what I was saying about Mad Max, um, Fury Road is a good movie, but told in a poor way because you shouldn't rely on your audience playing a game to understand a movie. You really shouldn't. That's that's poor form. And uh, you definitely, definitely, definitely shouldn't rely on your audience playing a game to understand a movie when the game hadn't even come out yet. So they dissect the Machina the hell out of the thing. And then the developers of the game went back and fixed that problem. And I respect them for doing it. But they shouldn't have had to. Uh, basically, the writers of the movie, of Fury Road, should have written the movie about how he became that level of insane. Because that would have been awesome. Because, seriously, out of all of the shit that Max has gone through in 1, 2, and Beyond Thunderdome, and he didn't go that level of insane, imagine the crap that he had to have gone through to actually go that insane. Oh, it would have been an amazing movie. But they decided not to. I don't know. Maybe they'll fix that problem with the next Mad Max movie, which is in pre-production, I think, uh, called Wasteland. I'm actually kind of hoping they delve into why it's the Wasteland now. Why it, uh, you know, a little bit more information about the war itself. But they don't need to. They don't have to. Um, and it really wouldn't be a Mad Max movie. Eh, if they do it right, they could, but eh, like I said, they don't have to. I accept that there was a war, there was a nuclear war, destroyed the world. I accept that's a fact, and I'll go with it. Um, so, yeah, anyways, uh, if I find more information from uh, Avalanche Studios, I will do a Let's Play of it, because I think I could enjoy the hell out of that game. But until then, I will say to you guys, as always... Keep playing the game and have fun. And hopefully I don't fall to my death. Hmm. Looks like Mr. Popo turned back on the sun. <laughs>